Lila is um, one of the founding members, actually, of the National Creole Council. She was a founding member of Creole Council, a uh, Creole organization in Punta Gorda. And because of that organization, we later on formed the National Creole Council, and she was one of the founding members of the National Creole Council, along with her council. Now, we know that um, she is known for her broke down music, most notably, you know, who said Creole now have no culture. Um, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, her importance in, in you know, showing off that Creole culture and, and having Creole people actually be proud of the culture that they do have? All right, and that's a very good question because that is something that we are looking at, have always been looking at. Um, it was very important because Lila was very passionate about her culture, although let's say her dad is Mayan and she's passionate about that culture, but she's also passionate about the Creole culture. And that was important to us to know that she was able to embrace both of her cultures. And so um, she was very vibrant and wanted people to understand the music, the variations of the rock down music, as well as to understand the importance of culture to the people. One of the biggest things, and we just spoke about that last week, uh, where she really wanted people to understand how important the Belize Creole is to the um, country because we were the ones that were there that assisted uh, when Belize became Belize. And that was her passion and she died uh, during that week, we talked about it, and she died with that on her mind, that the country will recognize how important the Belize Creole was in the country. Everybody else come and they get their importance, what happened to us. And that was really something that was dear to her heart, and so the National Creole Council will continue to push that. Now, we were looking at a few interviews that she had done previously, and you know, she spoke about also being Creole. And it's interesting that you brought up her Maya heritage because she often spoke about, you know, the connection between not only Creole culture but Griffin culture and other cultures. Could you talk to us a little bit about about you know how she saw the intertwining of Belizean cultures? Okay, uh, Lila did a lot of that through her music. She sang in Garifuna, she sang in Spanish, she sang in Creole, and very seldom sang in English, but she still was able to sing in English. So just by looking at the way how she used, she used music to interwine all of those things, the different cultures, you know, that is one of the biggest things that she, she, she was able to do. Because she could sing Garifuna, and she sing in Garifuna, Malate, part of that is Garifuna, part of it is Creole. Uh, she sang in Spanish, she sang in all of the languages, do you understand? And that was important because she was versatile. She can move. In terms of her culture, she was very passionate about her, the side of her Creole culture, and very passionate the fact that people don't understand all of the problems our young children are having is because they don't have a cultural identity, right? Because everybody say, and you know they said that for true that Creole not got no culture, well, we know Creole got culture, right? So all of the cultures took from the Creole culture, or the Creole culture combines all of the culture. And people don't want to acknowledge that, but it is the truth. And in Belize, we just have to acknowledge the fact that we are here and that we have our different cultures, and it's okay, whatever culture you want to big up, they're your culture, but don't put down anybody else's.